It's time to talk football. Back to pass, throws. It's caught. 10, 5, end zone. Touchdown. 43 28 Ottawa. And he sacked again at the 35. They get five sacks today for Ottawa. Pull this down. Kick is up. And it is good. Welcome to the Ottawa Red Blacks Radio Show on TSN 1200. Our weekly look at the Red Blacks and the Canadian Football League. A review of last week's game and a look ahead at this week's matchup. Along with the people, personalities, and all the great stories from around the CFL. Now, here's your host, Lee Versage. Oh, that is music to my ears. Welcome to the Ottawa Red Blacks radio show. Here on TSN 1200, the beginning of a new season, not only with the show, but of course with the Ottawa Red Blacks and game number one against the Edmonton Elks on Saturday night. It was a late start and uh, what a game. We'll take you through some of the highlights of that game and the week that was in the CFL and for a week that didn't have a ton of offense to it it made up for in defense it made up for in big plays and a little bit of controversy when it comes to injuries in the CFL so we have a lot to talk about here tonight on the opening episode and we have a stacked show coming up in about 15 minutes it's the CFL performer of the week with not one but two interceptions of Trevor Harris, Abdul Kenna, won an interception for a touchdown, 105 yards, and all the way to the end zone with a somersault flip across the goal line. One of three. He had two. Randall Evans had one. And Trevor Harris was all about the three on Saturday night because he went 33 completions for 333 yards but he also had three interceptions and although Ottawa was not very good on offense and we will get to that uh, we'll hear a little bit Paul LaPolice joined TSN mornings yesterday so we'll hear from the head coach uh, his thoughts on the game and the offense but Abdul Kenna will join us here in about 15 minutes looking forward to that conversation Uh, He has been here before, coming back, and what a performance by him and the entire defense on Saturday night slash Sunday morning as we went almost 3 in the morning on the Red Blacks post-game show. What a way to kick off the year. And interesting, at the bottom of the hour, about 6.35, we're going to have J.P. Bull Duke, former Ottawa Red Black, on the show. And he will give a, a perspective I think is a unique one just from deciding to hang him up and then watching week number one. What was it like for a recently retired player to watch? I'm sure not easy. And we'll talk to him about that, his emotions and what he's doing right now. And again, like I said, we'll go around the league. I think some of the biggest news came out of BC. Mike Riley, Nathan Rourke, Rick Campbell, who's starting, nobody knows. And by the time they figured it out, it was too late in Saskatchewan. Hamilton gets really their butts handed to them by the Winnipeg Blue Bombers after the opening drive. Uh, That was surprising. And then the Argos come back on the Calgary Stampeders. And they win in Calgary. Maybe as surprising as Ottawa winning in Edmonton. I'm not sure. Tough to predict after we haven't had a season for two years. But let's get to the game. And... Special teams has been the heartbeat of this team the last couple of years. You go back to 2018 where Lewis Ward had 69 consecutive field goals made, finished the season at 98%, an all-time CFL record. And nice spot for him on the road, down 3-0. Here's a 52-yard attempt with his first kick of the year. 52-yard field goal attempt for Lewis Ward, who kicks it up, has the distance, and it's good from Lewis Ward. 
69 straight field goals, a CFL record from 2018 and 19. And well, he continues with his tremendous accuracy here in 2021. So he didn't even know AJ had that in the call. That's why he's a co-host of The Drive, as well as the Red Blacks play-by-play guy, Matt Collins Vita, going, yep, it's all about the team. Uh, Lewis Ward, good from 52, ties the game. Now, tied at three, still in the second quarter, what looked to be one of these creative plays from Paul Apolise, or more specifically, Bob Dice, the special teams coordinator, Edmonton, back to punt in the second quarter. Back inside the 40 of Ottawa is Devontae Dedman. Hugh O'Neill lets this fly. Dedman will take it at the 36. Oh, he's going to throw near side. They've got a man, Ryan Davis. He's got lots of field ahead of him. 50, 45, 40 to the 35, 30, 20, 15, 10. Touchdown, Red Blacks! Razzle dazzle, Ryan Davis takes it to the house on the throw from Devontae Dedman, and they take a 9-3 lead. So a play that can only be described as the Music City Miracle. You remember Tennessee and Buffalo and Frank Wycheck throwing the ball across the field. It looked like it was a forward pass, and then they went back to review, and then it ended up standing, and it counted all those years ago. But this one did not count. And some of the controversy that comes in, look, you're never going to be perfect with video review, but this was a video review. It was called a touchdown on the field. So there had to be overwhelming evidence to overturn the call. I didn't see over overwhelming evidence. I don't know if anybody else did if they were watching the television broadcast. Now, do they have other cameras and the all 20... Well, they call it the all 24 camera where they have cameras everywhere to watch. If they had a view in the control center that showed that this was a legit forward pass, it would have been nice to see on television because they came back, overturned the call and called it no touchdown. It looked like Devontae Dedman was at the 38 and Ryan Davis was also on the 38. If they didn't call it a touchdown and they called it a forward pass immediately, I don't think there would have been overwhelming evidence to overturn that either. But they called it a touchdown on the field. So already we're in the second quarter of the first game and fans left scratching their heads at what the refereeing and the video control center are doing. It's fine that you call it that way, but show people why you are making a call that takes an exciting special teams touchdown out of a football game. There weren't many touchdowns this week for the Canadian Football League in general, let alone in this game. We're going to get to the only one here in a few minutes. But there was one touchdown in the game, and it came defensively. So you have an incredible special teams play that... You can liken it for me to offside in hockey. Is the skate blade touching the ice? Is it off of the ice by an inch? And does that matter enough to take something off the board? If it's a legit forward pass, fine. Show everybody. Here's why. But the announcers on television, the announcers on radio, everybody thought that there's not going to be enough evidence and a special teams touchdown was created And it was taken off the board. Explanation, please, from the CFL. But it remained tied at three after that touchdown was taken off the board. Now, the Red Blacks kind of got themselves in trouble. Down 12-6, their defense held tight on a couple of field goals. But they were down six. And Edmonton driving again when Trevor Harris was picked off for the first time. Harris in the gun. Looks downfield, throws deep, and it's intercepted. And it's Abdul Kana with the pick. Back as a red black after three years from 2014 to 2016. And Abdul Kana picks off Trevor Harris. 
And quite an interception because Abdul Kana had to run from the middle of the field all the way over to the boundary and the edge of the field after the receiver got behind the other defender. And what an athletic play. And you're like, wow, that's a great interception. Little did we know it was not his best of the night because they recovered from that. They got another Lewis Ward field goal, his third of the game, down 12-9. Edmonton with the ball in the fourth quarter. Into the red zone, first and 10 at the Ottawa 15. Harris throws, it's low, it's intercepted, and this could be a pick six. Open field, down the far sideline. Midfield, to the 50, to the 30, to the 25. It's Abdul Kenna. Touchdown, Red Blacks! No flags on the field. Abdul Kenna with his second interception of the night, and this one goes for six. You know, an interception return for a touchdown, 105 yards, a little bit fortunate. Trevor Harris with not a great throw, but the receiver tapped it back up into the air, right into the chest of Abdul Kenna, but he had to go 105 yards. And I have to tell you, listening to A.J. Jackiebeck call an interception return for a touchdown in the fourth quarter to give the Red Blacks the lead at 1 in the morning, yes, please. Give us all more of that, please. We haven't heard it in so long. We've been talking about the history of the club. And in live time in the fourth quarter, nice to hear A.J. Jackiebeck call with Jeff Avery, who knew it right away. You heard Jeff Avery. He only got a word in there, but it was an important word. Pick. And A.J. took the rest. So the Red Blacks have a lead, 16-12, to late in the game. There's 2.40 to go. But Trevor Harris is coming down again. Good news, though. Good news. Trevor Harris, as Matt Conazvita, who's producing this fine show, texted me 15 minutes into the game. Something about Trevor Harris, really good between the 20s, but not very good in the red zone when it actually counts, when it matters. And Matt Conazvita was bang on. His time here and his time since he has left here. 2.40 to go. Let's see how he does. First and 10 at the Ottawa 35. Harris back to pass. Rolls right. Looks left. Throws across his body. Oh, and it is. Could be. Oh, he did get it? No official. Yes. Pick. pick. And another one for the Red Blacks. And it's Randall Evans. Third interception tonight thrown by Trevor Harris. And Randall Evans gets this one just inside the three-minute warning. You know what? I might have fibbed there a little bit. Hearing A.J. Jacobet call an interception return for a touchdown at 1 a.m., I thought was the pinnacle. I thought it was it. But he had a really good line there about Trevor Harris and his third interception of the game. That one gave me chills as well. Randall Evans with a heck of a play to come across the receiver in the red zone. And the Red Blacks look like they have kind of a game-saving interception. They're going to win 16-12. They can't get more than a yard on second and two, and they got to hunt the ball back. Well, Edmonton, of course, going to make it interesting. They drive all the way down the field. Here is the last play of the football game. So here we go. Maybe time for two plays, but you'd have to think they're going for the end zone. First and 10 Elks from the Ottawa 17. Seven seconds left. Harris in the gun. Back to pass. He'll roll right. Dumps it off. It's caught by the fullback inside the five, and they're short. Time. And time is up. Time. time is up. It's an Ottawa Red Blacks win. James Tuck is brought down inside the five at the one. Referee still conferring. This should be an That's Ottawa it. win. And the flag is waved. The Ottawa Red Blacks have their first win in two years and five days since they beat Montreal. They've won an opening day 16 12 over Edmonton. Special teams and defense gets it done. And the Red Blacks are 1-0. Okay, I fibbed again. The Red Blacks winning their first game with just one defensive touchdown. And AJ and Jeff calling that when the guy gets tackled at the one-yard line. That might be the best call. 
We got three of them. It's amazing. Uh, what a game. Not a fantastic offensive game by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, Matt Nichols only threw for 71 yards, and obviously that is not going to be good enough to win a lot of games. Just going 12 for 20. Uh, Timothy Flanders only ran for 39 yards, and Ryan Davis had six catches for only 33 yards. Those are your leaders. But as AJ said also, defense and special teams. Lewis Ward, three for three, including a 52-yarder. Devontae Dedman ran back 11 kicks, eight punts, three kickoffs, and had 160 total yards. And Richie Leone punted the ball 11 times, had a 62-yarder, and averaged 48 and a half yards. Yes, the defense and the special teams win the game for the Ottawa Red Blacks in Edmonton against the Elks. As I said, Paul Apolise joined TSN Mornings yesterday on Monday morning and was asked about Matt Nichols and the offense and whether Matt Nichols' arm was okay and the, any concerns after the game. You know, we were talking about what we can improve on after the game. So uh, there's a lot. We, we, we've got to grow a lot offensively and, and, and do, uh, make sure we can do our part and get better. So, so yeah, we'll start. We'll start uh, fixing that as we go. But you know, the interesting thing about this game is, is for a teaching moment for our players, and this is something we've been hammering with them: is two offenses based two really good defenses this past week. Okay, in our game, right? Edmonton's got a really good defense. Um, and did a really good job. And our defense, we believe, is a good defense, did a really good job. You know, and the one that turned the ball over lost the game. The one that didn't turn the ball over won the game. So, you know, like, it, it didn't look pretty. we got to get better at a lot of things. We absolutely understand that. But that's a core thing to teach a team about, right? You can take all the other things about, but that solidified a win for us. And, and uh, it was a great teachable moment for our guys. So there is Paul Apolis, and he's right. They have a lot of things to work on offensively, but he's also right that you don't give up in a game, and if you have your defense and special teams and you just keep plugging along, something good can happen, and you can win games even when you're not at your best. So completely agree with him there on the ability to stick with it and pull through when you're not at your best. A teachable moment, a learning moment, and more importantly, a win for the Ottawa Red Blocks. Let's take a break because the CFL Performer of the Week, Abdul Kenna, standing by. Coming up next on the Ottawa Red Blocks radio show here on TSN 1200. You're listening to the Ottawa Red Blacks radio show on the official home of the Ottawa Red Blacks, TSN 1200. Welcome back to the Ottawa Red Blacks radio show here on TSN 1200. What a recap. It's well done by Matt Consvita, AJ Jackiebeck, and Jeff Avery. Oh, feels amazing. When you stay up that late, you want something tangible. And we got it at 1 a.m. Saturday night, Sunday morning. And... Look who is on the line right now. It's the CFL Performer of the Week. Not one, but two interceptions, including that one. 105 yards with a fantastic somersault flip into the end zone. Abdul Kenna joining us on the on the Red Blacks radio show. Abdul, how are you? I'm doing good. How are you guys doing tonight? Thanks for having me. Well, you're, you're in demand. We're thanking you. Right now, you're the CFL Performer of the Week, right? Um, I, I guess so. I'm voted by my peers. I appreciate it very much. But, um, you know, I couldn't have got there without my teammates, you know, the support of my de- defensive cast and my other DBs and D D backs and linebackers and D linemen giving the pressure to Trevor Harris. So I give all the credit to them. I just, I just did the easy part of catching the picks and, you know, running it back. Well, I'm not sure running 105 yards – back was the easy part but you know what abdul one of the the great things i don't know if you've heard this or not even if you have i think we all just want to hear it again D- here is the interception and the game winner for your team into the red zone first and 10 at the ottawa 15 
Harris throws, it's low, pick. it's intercepted, and this could be a pick six. Open field, down the far sideline. Midfield, to the 50, to the 30, to the 25. It's Abdul Kenna. Touchdown, Red Blacks. No flags on the field. Abdul Kenna with his second interception of the night, and this one goes for six. How does that sound? You heard that before? Nah, man, that sounds that sounds crazy. That sounds <laughs> that's goosebumps right there. For all of us, I mean, it, we're all up late. We're watching the game, and uh, to for you to do that, what is going on in your mind as you're running down the sidelines? Because that is a long run. Um, first of all, as I'm running, I'm just thinking, like, man, I, I got to make it to the end zone. It's going it's going to do good for my team. I got I got to score these points, like. I have to do this. I have to do this. And another thing, like, don't get caught. Don't get caught at all. Do not get caught at anything. Do not get caught. You can't get caught. Just make it there. And after that, everything will be all right. So that's the only thing I was thinking. <laughs> well, you almost did get caught because there are a lot of people chasing after you. Did you think about diving into the end zone, flipping into the end zone? Was that a goal all the, all the way down? No, nah, it wasn't really a goal. It's, it's just as I got to around the 20. And 10, I took a peek back, and I was like, yeah, they're not going to get me from here, so I might as well end it off with a nice little flip or something like that, nice little celebration, because I was tired. I just wanted to hit the ground <laughs> as fast as possible. <laughs> well, no wonder. Um, I thought one of the great uh, photos or you know television shots of the night was you – you got the gold ball in the one hand, and then you got the interception return for a touchdown in the other hand. You're like I don't have any more room here to carry any more balls. <laughs> I know. I mean, we'll take them as much as they can, but you know, we just we just happy to get turnovers. That was our that was our number one goal going into the game and going into the season as a defense is get as many turnovers turnovers as we can and win the turnover battle. As long as we can do that, then we can. Um, put ourselves in a better position to win the game and help our offense or help our special team score points. So that's just our number one goal. Every, everybody just get turnovers, get turnovers, and get more turnovers. That's it. What's the genesis of the gold ball? Ah, yeah. That's all. Um, you know, that's, that's, you know, that's a team thing that as, as the days go by, as the weeks go by, that, you know, more and more people are going to get the gold ball and, and you know, you just going to see what it means. But, but right now, you're not to keep it on the wraps. Oh, Abdul, it's show number one. We haven't been back in two years. We gotta wait. <laughs> yes, yes. You know, you got you gotta keep a suspense for the next for the next week. <laughs> well, that's good news because that means more guys are gonna get you know, fumble returns and and interceptions and all that, right? So I guess we'll we, we'll wait if we get to see more gold balls. Uh, we'll do that. Okay, I have to ask you a very important question here before we talk some more football. Yes, sir. Tell us how to pronounce your name properly. How, how, how to pronounce it? Well, everybody pronounces it Kene, Kenna. It's, it's Kenna. That's how you say it, Kenna. Abdul Kenna. See, that's perfect. You said it three times, so nobody can screw it up anymore. We're, we're going to clip it yeah. off. It's Abdul Kenna. Because when you yeah. hear it sometimes, and you know, I think for a lot of fans, I mean, you, you have history here, right? And a lot of people called you Abdul Kene, and that's how they know you, and all of a sudden, it's Abdul Kenna. It's like, is that the same guy? Like, it it looks like the same guy, but people are saying different names. So we wanted to clear that up, make sure that, uh, that that's... No problem. I, pre- I appreciate it. You know, everybody has their own accent. So, I mean, I'm not I'm not inf- offended in any way. Uh, you know, just happy to play the game and, you know, be, be, be a member of the Ottawa Red Blacks, you know, represent the team in a good way. So... You spent some time here before and, you know, moved on and then decided to come back and the pandemic hit. So there's a lot to talk about, but just the choice to come back to Ottawa and be a part of this Red Blacks team again. Uh, not a lot of guys have, you know, moved on and had the chance to come back with the history of this team, but you are one of them. Yeah, um, I, I just knew, like, when I left here, you know, I, I knew the type of people that was that was working here. I knew the type of organization it was. I knew it was a hard-working organization, and it was an organization that always wanted to win. When I left, they were winning, they, and they were winning for a couple of years when I did leave, but had a couple of bad years. And that, that happens to 
every every organization every once in a while, but I just wanted to come back, you know, help rebuild the team, help bring back a winning tradition, and, you know, just ball with a couple of my fellow teammates that had already re- re-signed here, and I knew what they could bring to the table, and I know what I can bring to the table as well. So if we all had a chance to get back and play here, that some, maybe something special could happen. So I was just excited for the opportunity that was at hand. And when it when it came out, I took it and ran with it with no hesitation. Abdul Kenna. CFL Performer of the Week and the man with not one but two interceptions in the 16-12 win joining us here on the Red Blacks radio show. So you spent some time in Hamilton, spent some time in Toronto before coming back to Ottawa. Uh, You won the Grey Cup and then you went to those other teams. Uh, Just talk about winning the Grey Cup here, what that was like with the bond that you had with a lot of guys and then what you learned from going and playing in two other places before coming back. Yeah, well, for, um, yeah, winning the Great Cup, there, there's no other feeling like that. As I don't, uh, most, some other players know, but not many know. Like that's 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 one in a lifetime thing. Like you get to do that, ch- checking off a big checklist, check mark off your football checklist. Um, with, with the bond I had with those guys, we we was, we was for real brothers. We was at one unit, one sign. We always knew what, what each other was doing. We we spent a lot of time with each other. We um we bled together on the field. We fought many battles. There's many times where people had us underdogs and we never cared. Like we just went out there and we knew what we could achieve and what we can do and just work on ourselves and that's the same thing I feel about this defense and this team and I just feel the same way. And when we finally got it done began to play with a you know, a great a great legend like Henry Burris, I got to play with Greg Ellison, Ernest Jackson, Chris Williams, Brad Sinopoli. Um, Sir Vincent Rogers, um, Jonathan Rose, Jarrell Davis, Brandon Thompson, um, Amaso Munoz, Moe Hopkins, Connor Williams, and um, Puno, my bud, back back again with him again. Love that guy to death. Um, got to play with so many great guys, so many great individuals, great men that, um, you know, we all learn a little bit of stuff from each other. You know, you, we'll always have that bond forever. So that's that's what I could take away from that team. And then just going going to other organizations, just seeing how other organizations was was ran. You know, learning how to be a pro. Just going into other places now. People looking at you as not only not a rookie, but someone to like look look up look up to and learn learn stuff from. You know, having position battles with other people, you know, learning other skills, learning how to play other defenses. That's that's what I learned from other um other organizations. And then while I was while I was playing in other teams, I didn't really we didn't we really didn't win too much, so I had to learn how to, you know, grind. You know, I just have to keep grinding, keep grinding, keep grinding. I've learned how to do that all my life, so it was nothing new, but you know, just in a professional setting, just you know how to you gotta come to work every day. Not even if you're winning. It's easy to come to work when you're winning. But it shows your character, how you come to work, and how you practice, and how you perform when you're losing, and what type of work ethic you have. So that's what I just had to keep polishing, and you know, polishing my skills as time went on. And soon, eventually, I'll be somewhere where you know everything will click together. You know, be able to be that guy again. You know, help guys come back, help guys win, and help the organization be a team player. You know, a community leader and stuff like that. So that's that's what I learned. It's a great answer. Abdul, along the way, where do you, like you mentioned, you, you know, your history, you were born in the United Kingdom, you went to New Mexico and played football there. You've been in all kinds of different spots before you got to the CFL. And as you mentioned, to be a pro athlete at this level, you got to grind, grind, grind all the time. But where did the transition come of grinding and, and trying to get into the league and prove yourself and know that you can do it to all of a sudden, you know what? I am a veteran. I am a leader. I am a guy that other guys are coming to me because of my experience. When did that specifically happen for you? Um, I would, I would say as, as on each team, as you, as you, you, you gravitate around different players and, and certain guys see your level of skill and see your IQ of the game. So, each year is, is, is not is I wouldn't say the same amount of people coming up, but you see people notice 
that your skills are, might be better than theirs or they can learn something from you so they start chipping off your game and all you can do is help. Like, I'm a person that I will always help my next teammate. I will help anybody. Like, I want to see the next man be better than me. So that's when I started learning that. And I, like, I had to hone that, like, okay, you probably know something that they don't know, so don't hold it in. Just just spread it out. Spread out the wealth. If they take it, they don't take it. If they do, they do. But at least at the end of the day, you can say you did your you did your everything, your all, to help them out, get to that next level or stuff like that. So... You know, maybe maybe specifically talk talk about some of the the people along the way. I know that you're really close with Sherrod and uh, Sherrod Baltimore, another you know player that's been here. And boy, has he had to grind as well. Uh, you two are close. I'm sure you're happy to be on the same field with him. Yeah, man, Sherrod is my brother, man. He lives. We from the same area. I met Sherrod in 20, 2017 after after the Great Cup year. After we won that year, I was still living out here in Ottawa before I went to Hamilton. And I came up here to the um, Red Blacks mini camp I met Sherrod. It's funny. He had, they gave him number 14. It was kind of funny. And I was like, yeah, man. I'm like, yeah, man. Do your thing up here. He was um, he was cool with Jarrell. Jarrell's my good brother, too. So he was cool with him. Jarrell introduced me to Sherrod. And ever since then, we've just been cool. We've been, we've been tight. We've been close. Go back home. He always come through. Come see the family. I see his family. But ever since then, he always, like, picks my brain or asks me, Hey, bro, what's good? How, how I'm looking like this? How I'm doing? That? I'm like, man, you you a baller. You an athlete. I always, I always, you know, big him up or tell him, like, what's good? What's going on? What's this? What's wrong? But we've always had a tight, close relationship. Even now, like, it's even closer now. It's even better. It's, it's even funnier now. Like, we, we, we're on the same team. We talked about it in the off season. If the opportunity ever came that, you know, would it happen? And it would happen. And, you know, Shiraz, like, People don't know, so I was a smart player, man. He's a very smart, fast, savvy, quick player. They, everybody tries to say he's small, but he, like he plays bigger, way bigger than what he is. He's not scared of nothing. He's ready to learn. He's he's he's, he's agile. He can make any play, any cut. So playing next to him is an honor. It's an honor playing next to him, and I, I just can't wait to see the player he turns out to be. So I'm I'm glad to be next to Sherrod Baltimore. I think we're all glad to see him get up the other night, too. Uh, a scary incident for a few seconds, just watching him lying on the field, a play after Antoine Pruno was lying on the field. That that can't be easy to watch teammates in those positions, especially on opening night. No, it's not easy, but um, we, we prepare for situations like that. We go into the game knowing anything can happen out there. And we have the mentality of next man up, next man up. So when one of our brothers go down, the best thing we can do is play the next man that comes in, play good to, to, to you know, to honor him and, you know, do our best to, to, to fill that void and make sure nothing even, we're not missing a beat. So when one of, one, like, when the fallen soldiers go down, we pick them up, hope we pray for them, hope everything gets back. But, you know, the game's running and we next man up mentality. And after the game, we go, you know, go thank them, go pray for them, go con- so make sure everything is all good like that. But everybody understands what's what's happening when we put on them helmets and go into the game. Forgive me on your history. Do you have a pick six in the CFL before this? No, no, no. I had one in Hamilton, but it got called back. So this is my first official one. <laughs> Sounds like you didn't think it was a penalty in Hamilton. I, I get it. Uh, mo- most guys don't. But um, <laughs> So for this play, like everyone I'm sure talks to you about the game-saving tackle that you made in the Grey Cup game and, you know, getting a a hand on the heel of, you know, the Calgary Stampeders that were going to go in and win the Grey Cup and you made that game-saving tackle. That's going to be number one, I'm sure, but can you put this play up as one of your top plays of your career? Yeah, I could definitely put this up there as one of the top plays of my career, especially being... um you know, a big game, us coming back from COVID, a big game for the season, a big, a game, big game for the CFL, a big game for the organization, going out there to a tough opponent, Edmonton, and, you know, pulling out a tough win. You know, they, 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 their offense played great. They had a, great, a lot of great plays, and uh, just us as a defense, just, you know, bending but not breaking what we've been preaching all year, what Coach Benny has been preaching to us. Um, Coach Lapo, they put us in all these type of situations during camp. We worked on many situations like this just for, for just for reasons like that. So it was great that they was able to foresee that and put us put us in in a well 
put manners that when we was in the situation that we wouldn't panic and just react and play fast. So, yeah, so, yeah, we happy about that. You know, just to close with you, you know, Coach Paul Apolis talked after the game about a learning lesson and, you know, to never give up. Your offense wasn't doing that much. And to know that your defense and your special teams were so good that you guys ended up winning the football game, I'm sure that is a lesson for everybody. And you as a veteran guy would know that, that, man, just because it's not going your way offensively or something happens during a game doesn't mean it's over, right? Yeah, it, it's never over, it's never over to the clock says zero 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 zero. So that's what coach preaches. That's what we try to go by every day and practice. Never stop going until the whistle is done, and just keep playing. At the end of the day, don't look up to the scoreboard. Don't worry about if you're on offense. Don't worry about what the defense is doing. If you're on defense, don't worry about the offense doing. Just go out there and do your job. You do your job, and at the end of the day, we figure it out when the clock says zero. But if you win, if you win your job, and then nine times out of ten, your team is going to win. So that's that's what we try to live by. Abdul, before we let you go, I know you're a good team guy, so you probably would say no to this. But I'm just going to say, can we hear the play one more time? Can we? Are we allowed to play your your interception here again? Because we we all just want to hear it again. For the fans, yeah, but you know. I owe it, like I said, I owe it all to my teammates. I owe it to my D-line of, you know, pressuring, pressuring Trevor, you know, making him throw the ball up like that, you know, Sherrod giving him a look like that. So I give kudos to all of them, and I just I just did the rest. All right, let's hear it one more time. Into the red zone, right. first and 10 at the Ottawa 15. Harris throws, it's low, pick. it's intercepted, and this could be a pick six. Open field down the far sideline. Midfield to the 50, to the 30, to the 25. It's Abdul Kenna. Touchdown, Red Blacks. No flags on the field. Abdul Kenna with a second interception of the night, and this one goes for six. Uh, it feels good to hear that. Abdul, thank you very much for your time. A CFL Performer of the Week, and I know that you guys are just getting going on defense. Uh, look forward to seeing you down at the field soon. Thank you, guys. Appreciate the call and appreciate having me on the show very much. All right, there goes Abdul Kenna, CFL Top Performer of the Week. We'll take a quick break. Uh, we're going to get the perspective of a guy in J.P. Bullduk that uh, recently retired, and I know he's doing well in his personal life, but we'll get a perspective on what it's like for a recently retired player to watch week one of the CFL year. That's when we come back on the Ottawa Red Blacks radio show on TSN 1200. This is the Ottawa Red Blacks radio show on TSN 1200. Welcome back to the program. Thanks to Abdul Kenna for joining us, CFL Performer of the Week. Uh, we go right back to the phone lines, and we welcome in former Ottawa Red Black <laughs> and now retired, living the luxury life, J.P. Bullduk. Is that right? Uh, it depends what you say. Thank you for what you think about it. I'm, in, uh, I'm actually in Niagara Falls right now, so thank you very much for, for saying it's luxury life, uh, Lee. Well, it is. Are you in Niagara or Niagara on the lake? I'm in uh, downtown Niagara Falls. Oh, that is living the life. That's tour <laughs> tu tourism at its best. No, it's for work. I wish it was for tourism. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, at least you get to see some scenery. Um, thanks for joining the program. I do appreciate it. For you, uh, interested in, first of all, how you're doing. Tell Red Blocks fans, this is the first Ottawa Red Blocks radio show. You were a staple on the show. You came in studio many times to be able to do it. So it feels... I felt like you needed to be on the first show after COVID and after you retired. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I've been great. Thank you very much, Lee. Uh, yeah, I'm uh, now. I jumped on the fence. I uh, I knew I would be a, a fan, but not a, a big fan like that. Uh, I, I was sitting on the TV the whole the whole night uh, watching two CFL games back to back with my girlfriend. Um, no, I'm I'm a big fan now. So I'll probably if I'm not on the show, I'll be listening to it. That's for sure. <laughs> So what is it like for you? I mean, to decide to hang them up, and I know that 
COVID had a different effect on different players and some people moved on. And, you know, it sounds like, you know, you can tell the people again, I know that you've been with us on the drive before kind of explaining what you're doing right now, but tell Red Blacks fans who are listening kind of what you're doing and are you at peace with the decision of leaving? Uh, I'm great. I'm still in the lumber business. Uh, listen, I, after watching the game on, on Saturday uh, evening, I, I knew that I did the, the right choice for me. I, I was excited to watch the game, but uh, I didn't uh, I didn't feel anything regarding where I wish I was playing. I was happy to, to look at the game and look at the boys uh, balling out there. My my good friend King Duel making plays and Sherrod and Antoine and Marco and all these guys. I was really happy for them. I was excited to watch the game, but uh, it wasn't itching me to play the game uh, when I was watching it. So I, I'm in the right place. I'm in a good place right now. See, that's fantastic. We would have had you on earlier in the show, but Abdul talked a long time. He is the CFL top performer of the week, right, with two interceptions. So he he was talking for a long time. So we're a little late getting to you here. But, um, (laughs) you you know, for for you to say that and and watch the games, we're just so interested in what it's like for somebody who decided to retire. And then, you know, some don't watch at all. Some watch and they want to get back because it's week one and it's just so familiar. And others like you, you sound like, you know, you're just sort of into the game, but knowing it was right for you to not be there. Exactly. And I talked to Antoine, and Antoine, the first thing he said uh, yesterday is like, how are you feeling? I said, I'm great. He said, I'm said, how about you? He's like, my body hurts so much, man. <laughs> and I was like, I'm so happy that mine doesn't hurt anymore. But, yeah, uh, it was a great game by the Red Blacks. I mean, I think we'll need some more points on the board uh, next week after the bye week. And then I think that bye week will give them a chance to, to get, get get going with the offense. But uh, special teams, can you – can you agree that 44-yard uh, net on punts is, is something incredible by uh, Coach Tice's uh, special team unit? It's unbelievable. And, you know, off, a defense, uh, I've heard some really good things about Coach uh, Benavides from Antoine. So I'm uh, very excited to look at, at these guys play in the next few weeks. You know, interesting that you say that because I know that you were a big special teams guy and one of those guys that ran down the field, you know, at full tilt on punts and kickoff coverage. You're right, 44 yards. You know, you give a lot of credit to the punter, but you have to give a lot of credit to the guys getting down the field and making the tackles. And, boy, from the coverage to the punt to Lewis Ward being automatic again to Devontae Dedman looking dangerous every time he got the ball, uh, special teams were at the forefront the other night. Yeah, I mean, what, what were you expecting other than, than Lewis to make 3-3? Three and three? 52 <laughs> yards, game opening, I mean, it looks like it's so easy. I, I think the only by watching by looking at Lewis, I think the only position I, I would go back would be kicker. It looks so easy when you look at him. Um, and then uh, Richie, I looked also at uh, Adam O'Claire. Uh, I think he's number thirty-two. Uh, I played with his uh, older brother at Laval and in Champlain. Anthony O'Claire was from the, the Texans now, and he's at my position on uh, on front. And let me tell you, he's doing a way better job than I was doing. So happy for the Red Blacks to, that they were able to get him. Oh, well, there you go. He probably wasn't doing a lot better than you, but that that's nice of you to <laughs> that's nice of you to to give him credit. And you know what? I mean, that's that's the thing, right? When you sit there and I'm sure you miss like going with the boys and winning and, you know, the travel and the dinners and and some of the things that are away from the game, but boy, to to wake up like I think we're thankful that Sherrod Baltimore and Antoine Pruno were okay after they got hit in the second half, right? Lying on the field. And, you know, I, I can't imagine what that's like knowing that you don't have to go through that anymore. <laughs> it is. Uh, I should be laughing because it, it's a dangerous sport and guys were, were hurt a little bit. But uh, when I looked at it, I, I did on TV. The first thing I thought was, well, I'm happy. I, I don't have to go through this because uh, I don't know if my body was, was is, is different, but I, my, my body after game were, was hurting so much. I'm the kind of guy that was limping. I barely played. I was only playing special teams, so I, I don't. I wish uh, I didn't know what it was if I was playing on on uh, a starting defense. So no, let me tell you, these guys are going through uh, through some some real stuff on the field, and they're they're real warriors. You, to be able to say that, you know, for you to watch a game like that that had no offensive touchdowns, and the only touchdown of the game was a defensive interception return for a touchdown. You must have been kicking back, had your feet up, going, yep, special teams, defense, this is what it's all about. Have you seen that play from Coach Dice? I mean, he designed it, but 
Devontae Dedman and that new guy, number 15. I, uh, sorry, I don't remember his name. Ryan, Ryan Davis, yeah. Wow, what a play. I mean, I, I uh, are you surprised that the referee in the CFL made a – and or the Toronto Command Center made a gear call? There was no evidence it was a backyard or backyard pass or – but it was, it was an incredible play. It was like so exciting. So I was uh, jumping on the couch and uh, Abdul Kenny at the end of the game. What a play! Wow, it was so much fun to watch, and we're so happy the, the football to be being, being back. It, it makes my weekend a lot better, or my week also. Yeah, and just talk about that play when you design something like that because. I ranted off the beginning of the show. Look, if that's a forward pass, fine, but I didn't see anything on television to overturn it, and they called it a touchdown. It looked like Deadman was at the 38 and Ryan Davis was also at the 38, but if it's not, that's okay. But they didn't show any angle that would overturn that call made on the field, and then they overturned the call. And that's what I know, I'm sure, frustrates players, but it also frustrates fans watching the game because the commentators on TV and just watching it, you say, is there indisputable evidence to overturn this? No. Let's leave the exciting plays in football, right? And you, between you and me, Lee, now that we have, we can bet on games in the CFL. And, hey, don't get me wrong, I'll probably be betting some money on these games. It's fun. It's exciting. You can have like, you can have calls like this. If there's some money on the line, you you have you need to have the best reference possible out there. So we'll see how that goes. But it's also the same thing for the dead charge. You know, we saw what was that with the BC Lions? You know, switching quarterback the, the day before or the, the 15 minutes before the game. If you want to have some some people put in some some a lot of money on the line, you got to have some follow through and some stuff like the NFL. Preach. Keep talking because you know what I, I say it every day. It, it's coming. It's here. That's what people want to do, and you have to give them some legitimacy. I don't know. I I think I felt bad for Rick Campbell a little bit in BC when you know he gets out there, and I think he does the interview at the beginning of the half, but it doesn't air until you know closer to the beginning of the second half, and then they made the decision to put Mike Riley in. I don't think it was a good decision, but it seemed like all kinds of things were happening that. As you said, from just a fan's point of view, if you're betting or not, it's weird. Well, listen, you put ten grand on the game. <laughs> Five minutes before the game, you hear that the best quarterback in the league is not playing. I mean, you must be freaking out out there. <laughs> well, I listen. If that's you putting that kind of money on the games, good for you. Um, yeah, <laughs> not that, me. I that, wish. But... That's not a lot of us. I can tell you that. Uh, we're, we are plumb out of time. JP, can we get you back here on the program uh, to be able to talk more? Because obviously, you know, you retiring and watching the games like you are, I think you would be great on with us on a regular basis. So hopefully we can we can call you back. Uh, I think the best thing for fans right now is to hear you sound at peace and watching the games you know, it was the right decision and that you're just a fan and you're going to continue to be a fan because you love the game. I love the game, and thank you very much for having me, Lee. It's always a pleasure. So much fun talking uh, football and sports with you. Have a great show, guys. All right, thank you. J.P. Bull Duke, uh, we will talk soon. And that's going to be it. The guests were too good. We didn't even have time to get to the controversy in B.C. The guests were too good. Thanks to Abdul Kenna, CFL Top Performer of the Week, and J.P. Bull Duke, ex-Ottawa Red Black, Watching the games, obviously, very, very closely. Thank you very much, Matt Connors Vita. We've gone a couple of minutes late. But you know what? It's the first show. Did you expect anything else? Shaking his head, no. He knows. We all know. Because we're excited. The Red Blacks are on bye week this week. And they're back on the field in Saskatchewan next Saturday night, August the 21st. It is a 5.30 countdown to kickoff, 7 p.m., kickoff, but we will be back next week with another edition of the Ottawa Red Blacks radio show here on TSN 1200.